maybe running uh, socket, the socket IO server. Okay, can I stop you a minute? Yeah, go ahead. So now on the server already has node packages, and then you can upload the code that you write to the server. Like, say you wrote a game, you could upload it upload the files and the application to the server. Then from my uh, desktop, I can access this, um, I can't even say, it, Acrology Builder server mm -hmm. and run the program there. And basically, like if it's a game, run the game. I could open the, the game and then uh, Roper could be on his computer and he could go to the server and we could both play the same game. Yeah, exactly. And That's what I want to do. Yeah, yeah. And what you would be doing is you would be loading, you know, index on HTML. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're familiar with that that model. So all the code about how to how to run the game client and mm -hmm. index.html and your browser is going to request a copy from the server and the copy is going to tell it how to connect to the socket io server so inside of index.html you know it's actually going to have socket io client so anytime you have a server you know it matches a client and so your code which we're going to write in index.html is going to describe how to connect back to the server and Right now we have uh, limited functionality. I'll show you what we have so far, and then we can add to it. So right now, if you go to you know that address demo.arcology.builder port three thousand, and then you type, you know, hello, I'm James. There's code that uses console.log, which is everyone's favorite debugging, and it just prints out here in the browser. You know, this is the, the copy in my browser. But then in the server, it repeats. Oh, interesting, it says, yeah. So it receives a message for the server, it prints, hello, I'm James. And uh, actually, I would invite a volunteer. So uh, Roper or, or James, if you don't mind, go to the server okay. and try typing something into the message blank at the bottom. Okay, so hold on. What's yeah. the address again? Demo. Yeah, demo. Dot, dot arcology. Dot uh, builders. The dot builders. Yes, colon three thousand, and I'll paste the link. Well, yeah, that's that's even better. Yeah. Uh, the link is. I don't know how to get the link out out of Discord. So I got it on that. that. If you look at the Discord room in the upper right, there's going to be a chat bubble, and there's going to be a little yeah, exactly. like red dot that to show there's new messages. So if you, you yeah, click there and open it, you see a chat history just for this voice channel. So I'm there. I have to hit enter. So oh yeah, and I see it. I see it. So this is the, the code, and then I say, okay. So I'm gonna say, hi. Oh, I gotta get rid of this. I'm gonna type hi. Roper. And Roper, are you logged in? He was with her. Roper, are you still there? Well, someone typed testing with this, like, uh, that was the me. Spanish style exclamation point. Okay. Good. Okay. He has, uh, his command of special characters, international characters. So yeah, I so Mari, Mari says, hey. Good. And uh, anytime a user connects, you know, we've there is, we've inserted okay. a line, which is... Sorry, I'm slow running. Please, please slow down. Okay, right, right now, we're trying to test it. Did somebody send a message? Yes, but the only place messages show up now is on the server. So yeah, oh. I just saw you type high roper. So if you look at uh, my screen in the stream, uh -huh. you can see all the messages that people are typing in, and you can also see when a user connects. So... You know, right now it said a user connected four times, and those four oh, users. Yeah, I, can see it. I can see my message. Hi, Roper. Hold on. Yeah. And I hit this and I say send. I just type some garbage in it. 
Yeah, and the message goes to the server. Oh, yeah, I see it. <laughs> the message goes to the server, right? So then the next thing would be to... Well, everybody can see the message that's in the server. Now, the thing is... The server is not graphical. Is there a way we can make it graphical so that it's in a browser? Yeah, if you put it, put it in an HTML file, right? Yeah, exactly. So the same, all the graphical part should be done in the client. And the, the server, we're going to keep like really simple. All it does is repeat messages. But you're right. So the, the same form where you type in your message, we can repeat messages there instead. And that's actually the probably the next part of the demo, but just that's the first step, right? Like if you look at our, our diagram of what's going on, the first step to communicate between the browsers is just to communicate with the same server. So now- Okay, so all the this, part I, I, this part I understand and it's a good graphical way to show me what's going on. Now, the server itself, if I want to see the code that you just wrote, what mm -hmm. would I do? Well, maybe now is a good time for you to log into the server, because that's where I'm writing the code. And it's just these. Okay, how do I log into a server, to the server? Hey, can I get the address again? I, I mean, I, where's the address at? It's in the, the chat. in the chat. Yeah, in Discord, if you look at the screen for this channel, Study Hangout, and you look in the upper right corner, let me see if I can point. It should be okay. up there somewhere. There's a. If you hover over there, there's a speech bubble and there's a red circle to show their new messages. So you click on that, it says show chat okay. in the tool. Click on that, you open it, and then you'll see chat messages from all of us, including links. So the last two messages are links to the server. So you don't have to type in the whole thing, but you can just click on these, the blue links instead. I don't see anything new yet. Here, I'll type a uh, hi Roper. Oh, I see. Where did it go? Yeah, it doesn't let you paste jiffies or emojis, though. So that's, I mean, jiffies. Probably lets you paste emojis. <laughs> so, yeah, just click on the blue links that say demo.arcology.builders. Oh, okay. Dot builders. okay. Click over there. Okay, now I see it. I see it new now. Great. All right. All Excellent. right. Got it. All right. Let me get over there now. So I think that's one of you. So this has a user connected. So maybe if you now if you type something in the, the blank at the bottom and click send, it's going to show up here on the server. <laughs> so am I? Am, So you see in the web browser, you've loaded demo.arcology.builders colon 3000. 3, yeah. It's yeah. mostly a blank page, but at the very bottom is a text blank. It's got rounded corners. Got it. I see it. I see it. Yeah. Great. Great. So you just type whatever message you want to there and click send. All right. Now, how do I log it? Hello, yeah. I'm here. Yeah, we got it. <laughs> How do I log into the server? Yeah, that's a good next step. So now's the right time. Uh, if in the same chat window, James, there's a link called uh, How to Install and Use Putty Gen to Create New Key Pairs. So if you click chat. that, it's going to take you to a client that lets you log in, you know, just like me. It's uh, basically like a command line login client called SSH on Windows, the most popular one is called Putty. And so it may ask you, if you don't already have it, then you can download, um, you can download and click it. So I have, I've showed the Putty gen page here in my, on my screen. Yeah, I see, I see it. I clicked on it, so I'm there. Let me just save this mm -hmm. one. I'm saving it on my computer so I have it. Yeah. Uh, put it, I put it on there. like a node. Uh, it's the... not Node. It's um, it's a Windows what? program. 
Okay, so now this thing. Okay, tell me what does this thing do? This yeah. this teaches me how to learn to log on to the server that you're on now. It it doesn't teach you, but it allows you to. So you can see the command line on um, right. It's like a black screen with a bunch of text on it, right. and um, on Mac. It's called a particular kind of program. You know, I'm using one called Alacrity, and I'm logging in with a command line tool. So Windows, the Windows version of it is to use Putty. So they just have different names, but they're programs that speak the same protocol. So mm -hmm. this, you know, this will let you log into a machine and, and run commands remotely. You know, it uses the protocol called SSH, which stands for Secure Shell. The shell is just the way you interact with your computer. So you, you download the demo? Is that what you do? Request it's a demo? A demo. It's just a, it's just oh, a connection. Download. It's just a connection program. Yeah. You can think of it as uh, a, you know, a terminal, a combination terminal, and then one the other computers. OK, so it's saying something about Linux. I don't want to do that. So Putty Gen, I should download and install that. Yeah, if you sc scroll down to the one of the first section that says Putty Gen download and install, there's a blue link that says download the Putty installation package. Okay, and I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do that good. now. I'm gonna do that now. Yeah, great. Okay, so I did it. I clicked on it. Did anything happen? No. Yeah, I didn't see anything happen. <laughs> download. Putty installation, click. I don't see it. Let me look at my yeah, maybe download folder. My down folder. Yeah. Let's see. I'll close all these windows. Then I want to open this up. Then I'm going yeah. to my download. It didn't download. I didn't no, it's not in download. Nothing it opened up another window. Oh, yeah, you're right. It does open another window. So, well, it's not. Maybe I have too many windows on. Yeah, yeah. No, my bad. So, you click on the blue link, it takes you to another page. And then. What's this? Okay. Let me see that. Download instructions. Yeah. So, is that? Putty terminal for Windows. Okay. Yeah, I'll paste the link. Let's see. Download. I'll choose yeah, okay. I'm probably 64 bit computers, but I'll I'll choose the 32 bit it's the Windows master download site on new pedigree on this personal home page. Installation instructions for Windows, setting up a public key, authorizing using. So do I have to read all this or is, can I just download this? <laughs> you, you can just download it. I'll we'll read it through together. I know it's a lot. This is okay. a is more involved than I was expecting. So if you yeah. know that you have a 64-bit computer, yeah. like you bought a computer in the last five years, it's probably 64-bit. OK, so I'm just looking for the thing that says downloaded, which I don't see so far. I'm going through yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, if you look at, um, if you click through, you have to click two times to a page called like Putty Secure Download, and then scroll to. Where it okay. says master download site and it says okay. you Hold on. Slow down. Master download. Okay. To get there, to get there, what am I clicking on? Am I clicking on his personal homepage or installation instruction for Windows? What am I clicking on to get to the download? The on his personal homepage. That's right. So I'm clicking that on his homepage. Okay, so I'm on his homepage and then his package install. MIS window installs for 60-bit site, PuTTY, and then there's some for another one. Let me move this over the screen so I can read it. Make sure I do the right one, because there's a whole bunch of them. Yeah, the one yeah. that I'm guessing that's right for you is the first one, where it says 64-bit x86. OK, I'm going to click it. Oh. Got it, yeah. I'm gonna click it. I mean, you know, normally I would read all of these things, but we're, you know, we're together. I don't want to hear all of the day. So I see the MSI thing. Yeah.
Yeah, it's good to be cautious. For sure, you shouldn't download and click anything you see on the internet. Yeah, so the file inside. Okay. Oh, that's just Norton telling me it's trying to do something. But it's like a MIS file when I upload it, let's say, showing folder it went away. That's great. So, so how go, do you oh, open I, I think it. I got it. I see it now, I see it now next. Then next. Install. Yeah, and if you want to be really safe, the, there's one of the links that takes you to the Microsoft Store. Microsoft Store, well, cool. Which is the, you know, Microsoft, they have security engineers. They, they check the signatures for all these files, and that way it's uh, safe. But I think there's a, there's a very minimal chance. I've done it, I've done it now. So. It's a compromise. Yeah, me too. <laughs> so how do you open it? So you just finish. click on it in the, the downloads folder. Okay, I finished it now. It finished the installation. Now I gotta find it. So now I was saying host ID. I think just click your search. I I searched Putty for mine. Okay, search for Putty. Yeah. So they search. That's, it should be the first thing that's there, but it's not. Let's do it. Search for Putty. 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 Okay, Putty app. And then I'm going to run, I guess I should say open. Yeah, open. Open, okay. Yeah, so now. Something like Putty 64 bit. Yeah, so okay. now it's a configuration thing. Yeah, Especially that's where I'm at. That's right. So you just click next, you, you can accept all the defaults. Okay, there's no next. Yeah, you have to do something. A name. They want you to put a host name or IP address. Oh, interesting. Do you can you share your screen or just that window so we can see? Sure. Let me it may be asking you, you know, what the first host you want to connect to is. Can I share mine? Yeah. Both of you, the great thing about Discord is both of you can share okay. your screens together. We can just like watch a different right. So you want to share yours first, Roper? I don't mind. I'll watch you. Okay. Yeah. Right here. Nope, not there. Not there. Not there, not there. Because I'm trying to share this screen over here, but it don't show. It doesn't show the little putty here. Let me try it. There. there. That's the right sound. So. That's mine. I'm going live. It, oh, yeah. You can both share it now. now. Yeah, I'm uh, it's not loading yet. There's like sometimes when you share your screen for the first time, it special permissions like Windows will pop up. You have to go to accessibility settings and oh, okay, allow, okay, I'll allow see. Discord to share your screen. So, okay, but you can see me now. Right? You tab on Discord. Let me see. Did that work? Yeah, that I can see right there. I can see yours now, James. And you're right. So the host name is asking what to connect to, and um, yeah, we'll we'll save the connection first. So the host name again is demo dot arcology dot builders. Okay, demo. Ooh. Yeah, so I'll just like to see in the chat history. Okay, yeah, go to the demo chat. demo yeah. dot. Do it for me because I don't remember. Oh, I had a link over there. Yeah, yeah. 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 A R C O L O G Y. Control V. No. I have to go to the link again, chat, and then where is it? Here it is. Yeah, you can drag it. You can right click and choose copy. There's, there's a number of options you can do. Let's see. Um, copy link and go over here and say paste it. Yeah, okay, I paste it now. You okay? You, you can see my stream now, right? I can yeah. see it. So you're gonna so remove the it. you remove the HTTP colon slash slash at the front, and then the colon three thousand at the end. You just okay. need the demo dot arcology dot builders part. Okay. 
Now what do I do? And then the port, you should change back to... Uh, oh, somehow we accidentally clicked on the wrong radio button. So below where it says connection type, choose SSH. So right underneath the host name, yeah, choose SSH. It'll change back to 22. That's correct. And okay. then now you can click save. You know, he, in the he three buttons. Sub, well, he say sub. Mine says tail net. What? Okay. okay. When I try to save it, I'm getting the ding. It means something is wrong. It's not saving. Uh, maybe you have to type a session name. Hmm. Yeah, so in the saved sessions, so in the blank underneath saved sessions, can you try, um, yeah, try clicking save now that you've chosen default settings. Does that work? Did it ding? Uh, it didn't, it, it didn't go ding, but it's had nothing happened. Yeah, that could yeah, mean it's, that, that's just could be the lack of user feedback on this program. So now, you can try clicking open. Uh, it's not going to work because you haven't generated a key and given it to me yet. But you know, small baby steps. So let's choose. Let's click open first and see it try. It did open. It opens. Mine says unable to connect. Host does not exist. Mine opened. See, you can see it. Uh, you stopped your screen share, or maybe Putty stopped your screen share for you. Okay, let That'd me go back to this. But yeah. James, your screen share stopped, so I can't tell. I'll do another one. Share screen. And Roper, I, we can't see your screen yet. My spooling. <laughs> Due to like some uh, privacy or accessibility issues. So do you see it? Um, let's see. It's this screen, I think. Is that it? Uh, go live. Okay, let me see. Let me you see it now? Uh, I think so it's just like a, a white band on the top of a yeah, black screen. Yes, yeah, raw screen. Share. Stop, stop, stop sharing. Stop streaming, I guess. Now uh, I here we go. There we go. Share your screen. There we go. That's me now, though. But okay, share your screen. Shh, go live. Uh, Okay, you see my screen now? Yeah, oh, there we go. So it says host key is not cached. Uh, go ahead and click accept. Okay. Yeah, no. I, I'll promise you that there's no man in the middle. There's no attack going on. That's Okay, I did that. Oh man, it's stopping your stream each time. It must be a very private application. No problem. Sharing each individual window. And so each time the window closes, it closes the screen share. Yeah, good point, Dispulik. So, James, whenever you share next time, try clicking the tab at the top, and instead of applications, click on the one that says screens, and okay. then share your whole screen. Share your screen, and select something to stream. It says I need to select something, though. Yeah, so oh, there are two tabs, there. one called applications, one's called yeah. screen, and you want to choose screens. I want to choose screen or I want to choose the application? Screens. Okay. And you want to share a whole desktop. Screen. I, mean, I don't know if you want to, but it would be the most convenient yeah. for us. <laughs> and then I did that. And the screen one and screen two, because I got two screens, I guess. Whichever and one is the one that you want us to look at. And I want you to look at that one. I said go live. That was a question I was about to ask because I'm I'm running two screens, so I was thinking that's causing a problem. Okay, so now what do I do? Okay, so it says login as. So the user is going to be called EC2. Okay, hold on. Dash. Okay, I'm going to move this over so I can see. I'll bring it back in a minute. Okay. It's called E. E EC2. Well, wait a minute. I'm not in the right then User. E, what's going on? It's not typing. Why not? Are you clicking? Does the black window have the focus? Yeah, it does. I'm clicking on it. It says focus. Then E. Nothing's going in it. Why is that? This is weird. 
Well, did you get a message uh, saying that it disconnected just a second ago? I thought I heard you say that. Yeah, this one says in, that window says inactive. So go ahead and close it. Click on the X in the upper right corner. Close it. Okay, now. And now do what? Go okay. back to buddy. Yeah. Uh, the application again, right? So we're going to use Putty as a suite of applications. So you're going to run. Hold on. Start, hold on. Slow. Start menu. Slow down. Menu. Yep. And then Putty. And uh, in the Putty folder is one called Putty Gen, which stands for Generate Key. Putty. Do you see one called Putty Gen? I haven't got there yet. No, I got that same thing, the putty configuration thing. So I could open. Uh, go ahead and close that. Close that window. It says close or cancel. You know, click click on that. You yes. just want to close. I can tell that putty is open on your computer. Yeah. So go back to the start menu and instead of opening putty, you know, if you type putty in the search bar, it should show you one of the options is just a folder or there's one called Putty Gen, which is like a related program. Okay, so I just see, there's one that says recent Putty. Should I open that one or should I see, try to find other things? You should try to find other things. The one that you're looking for is called Putty Gen. G -E. Putty Gen, G-E-N, yeah, I got it now, Putty Gen. Yeah, that's the one open you want. that one? Yep. Okay, I'll open that one. And then there's a the thing that says generate. Yeah, exactly. That's the one you want. Can you drag that onto you, the desktop that you're sharing? Sure. Just because it's it's not being shown right now. There you go. Okay, great. So go ahead and click um, on the bottom where it says parameters and it says RSA is clicked. Instead, choose the one that says ECDSA, which is just shorter. By, that's my preferred crypto system. And then you can click generate. You learn all this. And uh, go ahead and move your mouse around a little bit. It's it's collecting randomness from your mouse. There you go. Nice. I've been doing this for a while, so it's uh, and also you know I'm a huge nerd about cryptography. So my username used to be Crypto Goth because I like thought about cryptography a lot. Uh, great. So we're not going to have any key phrase. Just you know keep your computer locked and uh, yeah, I think. I think this all looks good. And now you want to click the save public key and the save private key parts. So, okay, should I write this down somewhere? Should I take a screenshot or? Uh, nope, it's stored for you. They're stored on files on your computer. So that's the okay. advantage of it. Save public key or save yeah. private key? Which both, one? Both of them. Click, for, click first one of them and then click the other one. Save. Oh, well, they give you a choice. Um, okay, you can. I would go to your home directory. So can you scroll the left pane on the file explorer, scroll up and down until you can see like my documents. Um, uh -oh. And then say, oh, yeah. No, yeah, scroll there, scroll all the way up and keep scrolling up, keep going up. Yeah, keep going. Yeah, you can save it on desktop. That's a that's a or documents. Documents is a okay place to put it. So here, okay. or do I need to save it in a folder? Uh, we're gonna create a folder just to keep it, just to make it nice and neat. So yeah. new folder, folder, and call it keys. K e y e s. K e y e s. Sorry, I, I can't spell tonight. Just K e y s. Oh okay. man. Why did I say <laughs> yes? Yeah. Key. Keys. No. Uh, keys. Yeah, S. That's there. Yeah. And then okay. press number. And then okay. double. Click. And then okay. not, not yet. Not yet. So for file name, um, this is the public key. So you're going to call it uh, ID. ID. Uh, you can call it just ID dot pub for short yeah that's fine well, this is the I, don't know if you put, I don't know if you can put dot pub in the name but let's i try. think i think you can so i can give you permission to try great 
So the public key is saved. And now go ahead and click Save Private Key. Save Private Key. And go ahead and uh, yes. So we don't want a passphrase. There's nothing super sensitive about this one. And okay. now you can just call this ID by itself. It's going to add a, its own extension, but just ID by itself is fine. And That's then press save. OK. Uh, great. And then now I think we're done with PuttyGen. So go ahead and close the key generator so with the X. Mm -hmm. Great. And then we're going to open the original Putty application again. OK. Run. No. That's not right. OK. Uh, all that. No, let's do it like this. This normally took the recent one. You, oh, here it is. It is a recent one, yeah. Why is it mine okay. trying to make me save it in a different location? Putty. Is it giving you the option to save it? Oh, Roper, I can see your screen now. Nice. Okay. You say putty configuration? Yeah, it keeps uh, trying to make me save mine in a different location. Well, you can choose. So yeah, you'll do the same thing. You're going to scroll up on the left-hand side, the left-hand pane, until you see documents. I usually like to keep it in the, a standard place. In, so in, in the same folder, right? So keep scrolling up on the left-hand pane. OK. So you know where it says organize? Um, uh -huh. Yeah, keep scrolling up in that. Yeah, all the way to the top until, okay. yeah, there you go. And then choose home. Yeah, that's your home directory. And then choose documents. Yeah. And double click there. Yeah, and then create a new folder using. New folder. OK. Yeah, great. And you can call it keys, K E Y S. Now I know how to spell keys. Okay. And then double click inside of keys. So go inside of keys. Great. And then now, yeah, you're ready to save it as id.pub. All right. And so and now then do save the private, private key. key. Yeah. And yes, so it's OK to not have a passphrase. OK. And then uh, you're in the right directory already, so just type id. And press save. So that's just going to match up in the future. You'll know that ID PPK is the private key that matches ID. Okay. So we Great. have a we have a bunch of people here now. Do uh, yeah. are yeah, you well, guys watching this? Are you getting anything out of this? I think they know, they know how, I think they know how to do this stuff already. Oh, they know how to do this stuff already. Okay. Oh, they slowed everybody down. No, no, no. They're they're. Um, <laughs> I think they're watching at their own speed or they're working on things in the background. Don't worry about them. I, I do the same thing. Whenever Dispulik is working with Duke or someone else is pair programming, I'll just listen in for fun, even if I'm not following along with everything. Yeah. So, so James, uh, yeah, now you can close PuttyGen and you can open the original Putty program. I know it's confusing because they have similar names, but Okay, it's, it's, it's not the configuration. It's just putty program. It's just the putty program. That's right. So okay, let me do that. All right. Uh, you, so. you only have to generate once, so you don't have to do that part again, which is which is a relief because it's like involved. So now open up the app now, right? That's right. Open up just just putty. The putty app, right? That's right. The putty app. There you go. When I do that, I get the putty configuration thing. Well, that's yep. letting you choose the, the host name. The host name. And we tried saving it earlier, so we didn't have to type it in again. Can you try clicking on default settings and load? Default settings, right. So you know, it has a list of sessions there. And I click load. Nothing happens. So click on default settings to highlight it. Okay. Yeah, and then click load. Oh, I would have never did that. No. I think that if you want to override the default settings, you have to actually type default settings in the blank. I don't know why it didn't beep, but I think it didn't save it. Okay, well, we'll, we'll have to retype it again and then save it. So, yeah, you can paste it and then get rid of the...
So leave the host, but what about the host name? Leave that as uh, demo arcology builders. Demo.arcology.builders, but you okay. can get rid of the colon 3000 and then the HTTP colon slash slash at the beginning. All right. Get rid of that. And uh, yeah, we're going to save it with a more descriptive name. Okay. Not default settings, but we're going to. Can gonna... you still see my screen? Yeah. yeah. That yeah. looks fine. Yeah. It looks good. Yeah, but we're going to save it with a special name. So under save sessions, there's a blank. And we're going to, you're going to, you can copy and paste the same thing. Uh, Demo.arcology.builders. If you go up to host name and drag okay. and select it, you can okay. copy it. Got you. Got you. Yeah, you got it. And then paste it down there. And then click save. All right. Well, that, that looks like it did something. So that was a good suggestion. So now, uh, try clicking, well, let's see. There's a few other options. I think we want advanced options. We want to be able to enter in a username, specify a key. So on the left-hand pane under connection, where you see SSH, there's like a plus next to it. You can click on the plus to expand it. Uh -huh. uh, great. And let's click on auth. Click on what? What? Auth, A U T H. Yeah, credentials. Open it. Yeah. And then we're going to you're going to browse. Click on browse to load the private key. The key. Okay. Okay, I don't so see browse. Credentials. Oh, credentials, and then say browse. Yeah, and then go to exactly where you found it before, and then the file ID is your private key. Okay. That's good. So choose that and click open. Okay. And then mine is, it says id.ppk. I only have one there. Yep, that's fine. We only generate click it. it. Click we only it. One. Yeah, so that's the one you want to select and click open. Say open. Okay. Well, real, well, you can't. You really want to save the configuration. It won't uh, save we it save, you save it again. We save the sure. session. We save the you, session, you so... I think it'll save the host name. Well, you can try it, but I think the private key will be gone next time you start. Okay, well, we'll let's try and see. I'm trying to find out where to enter in the username now. With the and key, you don't need it. The key, the key is uh, all you need. It oh, because the, the key contains... Yeah, because the key... The key well, I don't think that's sufficient because the, it, the key doesn't know what your remote username is, which in this case is defined by the AWS server, so... So if you had multiple accounts with the same key, you're saying? It'll prompt you for the username if you don't give you the remote login name. It'll prompt you okay. for it. Okay. I don't know. I've not used Putty in about five years, so. Well, I mean, if you don't use Windows, and there's, <laughs> I understand. Yeah. There's no <laughs> Let me go back to the Putty uh, website. So do I click open now? After credentials, after I place that um, that that private key. Um, hold on, I need to check something. Yeah, I think you can just uh, choose the session, the demo to arcologies .builder session, and then click open to open the connection. And if it asks us for a username, we'll, we'll type it in then. Okay, wait a minute. I'm still on the credentials page. I should click open now. Let me see. So you... Let me see if mine looks if you, like... you selected the ID key, which I think you did, then you're done. So you can just go back to the sessions and then open. But you have to add the public key to the list of accepted public keys. Oh, you're right. Okay, so uh, I just you'll sent you a public need... key for me. Yeah, yeah. So you'll need to open Notepad. Hold on, but I'm lost now. There's a lot of parts here. It's that's okay. So okay, right now I'm at the point where I'm at the putty configuration credentials. I clicked on the IPK thing. So do I click on open now? 
Uh, not yet. So you, in Notepad, you want to open the public key, id.pub. Okay, hold on. Let me go to Notepad. Yeah. Okay, file. File. Open. open. Documents. Documents. Yep. Keys. Yep. Keys. And it says no item in key. Change the where it says in the lower right hand corner where it says text documents. Change that to all documents. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All files. It didn't, and change. Nothing, it didn't change. Nothing, nothing's there. Try changing it again. It didn't actually change. Oh, okay. All files. There you oh, go. I now, did. Um, the PPK one. No, id.pub, the other one, the second okay. one. Open it? Yep, double click. Okay. That's different. That is different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think I can convert that. Yeah, I don't know yeah go ahead and uh, drag and copy everything in between. You can just copy the whole file. So control A, control C will select all and then copy. Or you can drag over all and copy. Just boo look, I've added your key so you can try logging in. Control copy. Okay, now what do I do? And then control C will copy it. I copied it. And then in the Discord chat, go ahead and paste it. The same place you'll see Dispulik pasted his public key. Put it in Discord. Oh, public key is okay to, in the chat. That's right. In the chat. Okay. Is that, you see did it I paste too much in mine or is that? Nope, that's perfect. So the public key is okay to paste. I mean, you shouldn't paste it in any channel, but this is a safe space. So it's okay to share it with friends. It's no one yep. can, it's the private key that lets someone log in as you. This is just. Um, I'm there. I want to paste it, but where do I paste it? I'm in the inbox. Just in the uh, chat. So, you know, instead of the name, right. yeah, instead of the blank where you normally type, you know, hello or to us, that's where you would paste it instead. So, Control V to paste it. Okay. You were right about the username. I was wrong. Uh, well, you were able to log in with the username, right? Yes, yes, but just I have to have the username specified. Yeah, yeah. So I'm. So I think all Putty does is ask you at the when you connect, it asks you for the login name. That's all. Which is, you know, if you have to type it in every time, that's kind of a pain too. But. Okay, now what do we do? Um, will you press I think enter? You gotta hit enter. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Roper knows. You gotta hit enter for us to have it, and then. See ropers. I just like to speak up when I do know something. That's not often. <laughs> no, you, you're good. You you spoke you spoke in turn, and it, it was it was the right <laughs> way. Did you hit enter yet? Oh, is that James? Yeah, I hit enter. It's in the chat. Okay. Uh, I don't see it, it yet. Is. No. I don't see it. It's in the chat. No, you haven't pressed enter. I can see your screen. Oh, you got to click in that your chat box and then click enter. Hit enter. I did, but I'll do it again. Enter. There, there you go. go. Yeah. Okay. I didn't do it. All right. Learning, learning, learning. Okay. I've added Roper's key. I'm adding James's key right now. Okay, so now back in the SSH config window, you can choose the session called demo.arcology.builders. You said in the what window? The SSH, the putty window. The putty window that says certificate or I open up putty again? The one where there are sessions and you created one called demo.arcology.builders. Okay, let me see if I can go there. Uh, yeah, I see you have it open. It's right in the middle of your screen. So, 
Really? The one that I, I says putty. No, putty that's configuration. Mine. That's, mine you looking at. that's not much, man. Uh, it says CC Hun's screen. CC. Okay, this. Yep, that window right there. Putty configuration. So. That's his screen. That's not mine. Yeah, that's my screen. Oh, I see. <laughs> that's confusing. Oh, you're watching his screen share. Okay. My bad. So, James, so you want to open? Should I be watching? You should be watching your own screen. I'm. Uh, Okay. The rest of us can choose to watch one of your screens so that we can help. Okay. okay. Gotcha. But okay. Oh, if so you're doing this for time, you should watch your own screen. Okay. So I'm eight, open the putty screen. Exactly. So open putty. I, I can tell it's already open on your computer. So. Okay. Choose. Yeah. There. Can you drag yours onto the screen you're sharing? So. Sure. We can see. Okay. Uh, great. So you can choose. Under saved sessions, under default settings, choose uh -huh. demo.arcology.builders. That's okay. the connection we just created. And then click open. Yeah. Oh. I, I hit open, and mine is asking me to accept or connect once. Uh, accept is the one you want. So you only have to do this once. It's just making sure that the server is the correct server to connect to. So click accept. Accept. Yep. Yeah. And now it's going to ask you for a login as. So you're going to type EC2. EC2. Uh, e, the letters E, C, and the number two. That's all. So I, I click EC2, right? You don't click it, you got to type it. I mean, I, I type that in EC2. Okay. EC2 uh, hyphen user. Hyphen, that's the, the, minus, the minus sign. The, the, the big one or the, the one under, okay. The one without the shift key. So just um, EC2 what? The minus sign by itself. Minus. Let me put it on the screen so you can see it. EC2 minus, and then what? User, U S E R. User. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah, and now press enter. Okay, should I type this down so I remember it? Uh, we'll practice it again, but yeah, if you have, if you want to write it down somewhere. Yeah. I wish it were easier on Putty or on Windows in general, but. Uh, I said it refused my key. I think you can save the username somewhere. Like one of those configuration options, I'm pretty sure you can save the username. I, I don't know where I, it is, but I, I vaguely I'll remember that. I'll keep looking for it for sure. Enter. No supported authorization man available service sent. Okay, you hit OK. Okay. And then go ahead and close that window and start putty again. Okay, close it. Start putty again. Go under, um, click on Demo Arcology's users and hit load. Okay, low, yeah. Now click on the auth, that plus sign next to the auth in the... Connections? Uh, under no, connections, no. yep. Okay, wait a minute, let me get here so I can see. Oh, it's SSH, I thought it was SSH. called auth. It's SSH and then auth. I can't actually read the screen, it's too small. Yeah, and well, credentials. Whatever you just pulled up. The yeah, credentials, okay. Okay, so you, yeah, you gotta browse for the private key. Private key. Okay. Are you and choose ID. ID. I'll roll. That's right. And then, oh, this book, if you add EC2 user at demo.arcologies.builder, that's the only way to save the that username okay. with the host. Um, so, yeah, go back to. Gentlemen, gentlemen, I'm lost, right? I clicked on the name, and now what am I supposed to do? Uh, did you click on, on the left-hand side under connection? Did you click on SSH? No. Connection, SSH. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Expand the SSH part. There's a plus sign next yeah, to you. Yeah, hit plus sign. There's the plus yeah. sign. Yeah, yeah, I'm there. Of the SSH. No, James, you got to hit your plus next to your SSH. I I'm did. Close. You did? Yeah, oh, and okay. now, don't you see it says... Hit the try the option. plus sign oh, yeah. again. Yeah. 
yeah, the, to the left of SSH, though, you see on the left-hand pane under connection, there's a plus sign next to SSH. There you go. Now, so then AUTH. AUTH, auth. Plus, for plus, hit the plus. Authentication, yeah, the plus again. And then credentials. I know there's a lot of pluses. And then for private key for authentication, you got to click browse and choose the private key that we have. So that one, yeah. And then open. And now click on, scroll up in that window to session at the top of the menu on the left hand okay. side. Click save. Yeah, you need this. If you if you save session is the very top one. Click just the session, just session. Not the plus, but the word session. Okay, and is this something that's logging? So next, next to the plus sign, click session. Click just to the right of the plus sign. Click the word session. Yeah, the word session. Okay. And now click save. Well, and before the, you do that, before you do that, in the host name. In right before demo.arcology.builders, so at the top where it says host name, yeah, that blank you want to type ec2 minus user at in front of demo.arcology.builders. That will that will let you save the username. Oh, I was supposed to do it in front of uh, you still can, it's uh, you can go back. it's not too late. ec2 minus user and then the at sign. User name, user U S E R, and then the at sign. So uh, shift, oh, at shift sign. two, shift two is the at sign. Right. But you need you need an R at the end of user. Let me go back because I can't see. Hold on, be right there. User, user, E. C two dash user at demo. Okay, I got it. Yeah, so that's how you specify a username in, in Unix. Okay. And uh, now underneath save sessions, underneath default yeah. settings, click on demo.arcology.builders just to highlight it and then click save again. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we, we don't only have, to, only have to do this part once and then click open. And then we can move on to new problem. <laughs> It's said it again. Um, Same thing. It refused the key. Well, it's a different error message then. It says, let me zoom in to see what. No, it is. It is different this time. Oh, no, I said refuse key. Yeah, refuse our key. Well, new, new errors are progress, so. Um, let me see if I added it correctly because it's a uh... no supported authentication. Yep, we got the same message, so that's cool. But it's a new message this time, right? No, no. Never refuse that. I do remember. I don't think I highlighted my um, my. Demo. Oh, yes, I do. Do you maybe That's need what? the dash 2020230213 on the key name or the key type? Uh, I don't think so. Don't think so. On I the, don't know. Uh, I'm not familiar with the, the way it's exporting that key. Yeah, no, I'm reading a Stack Overflow answer where it just says you need the crypto system, which is SSH, EC, DSA, and remove all the line breaks from the key. Let me look at the logs for OpenSSH to see what the connections are. Gentlemen, I can't tell you guys how much I appreciate this. 
No, not at all. I'm, I'm uh, impressed that you've stuck it through this. It's not uh, even for experts. I know there's a lot of steps <laughs> involved. So I doubt it. <laughs> I doubt if I'm an expert. But I'm looking forward to uh, setting one of these up at the uh, church building, Paul. For sure. Like, uh, if you have a, it doesn't have to be a new computer. You can have a, you can be a perfectly decent server as long as your, the church building is okay, keeping it in a corner and uh, powered on. So you said, you said, I need a server. Oh, okay. you, don't, you don't need a server, but I mean, we can, we, if you bring your laptop to the church's Wi-Fi, you can definitely log into a server there. You can also set up a server um, if, in case you don't want to use Amazon's server. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk more about that. It's called... What is it called? Yeah, you know, when I was reading about servers, I was thinking about that because I have a, in my bedroom, like I got two big desktops side to side. One is an older one. It's like a 16 gigabyte computer that I never do anything with. It just sits there, but it's plugged in and logged onto my internet. Yeah, you don't have to need a new computer to serve it. Okay, so in the logs, I'm saying that uh, accepted a public key from one EC2 user by Dispulik, and then it it says error disconnected from two other users. And I'm going to try and see if I can. Um, the see way you could know better. definitively is to mm -hmm. run SS Keygen again or Putty Keygen again. And you don't have to save the key, but you could just generate the key at the top. When you do the generate key, it gives you the format of what should be saved in the authorized keys file. Well, this, the putty gen format is slightly different though. But no, it's not, not the, not when you hit save and then open in the actual putty key gen program, when you first generate a key. Yeah, it has at the top. There's a box in in Putty Keygen that shows you that has the authorized keys entry. Oh, I missed that then. Um, Why well, I, I tell all the guys to open up their Putty Gen again? But but we can do yeah, it. I mean, it won't save the key unless you. It won't overwrite the key. It'll just generate a new one. Okay, so you want us to do that, Paul? Oh, I think I see what... Um, let me try one more thing. I'm going to have you... I just called the crypto system the wrong name, so... Okay, Roper, can you try logging in again by clicking the the session, the demo.arcology.builders session, and then clicking open. And then James, can you also try the same thing? Awesome. It didn't say if my host name though. Right, let's see. Awesome. Uh, you, you might need to click load. Yeah. Load, okay. Oh yeah, there you go, yeah. Click load. And, and then open. Hey! Yeah! Hey. I just called the crypto system the wrong thing. So, how about you, James? You got it. Um, it doesn't have that EC user thing on, in front of it, though. Do I have to put that in, in front of it again? Uh, you cl click load. Try load. clicking load. Yeah. Oh, I think we just there. You go. Okay. Yeah. Now you open it. Okay. Now I it's there. I'm there. Hey. Okay. <laughs> we made Final. it. All right, now, um, now we can use, now we can use Tmux. Um, 
So both of you go ahead and maximize the window. So click on the, the maximize icon and blow it up as big as you can. Great. And then type T-M-U-X, which stands for terminal multiplexer. T-M-U-X space. Space. The letter A. A. And then press enter. Enter. Okay. So you attach to a terminal multiplexer session. You can see me typing. Hopefully you can. Go ahead. Go ahead. Are you typing something? I. You should see me typing on the terminal. No. No. Oh, is this a different terminal? Okay. But this is fun. This is cool. Okay. Maybe now you can see it. Can you see me typing now? A whole, you made a, a square and there's a whole lot of dots on the other I side. The movement, but... Yeah, yeah. So that's because my... Let me decrease my font size to increase my window size. And then when the dots go away, then our screens will be the... Uh, you know, close enough. So that just means that my screen is narrower than yours, but mine is... Mine okay. has like one more line, but if you see the dots, it just means you're connecting to a shared terminal with okay. someone with a different screen size. That's all. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. So this is what I see on my screen. This is what you see on your screen. And uh, well, I see you typing. Hey. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Now there's two screens. There's side by side. Well, we're side by side virtually, but um, I, yeah, terminal, Tmux lets you create different panes, so you can break up a terminal. You know, for example, I can break up a screen vertically. Okay, why did you break it up? Because I want to show you multiple things at the same time. So, oh, yeah. So, you know, in a terminal, sometimes you have to like switch away, but then you lose track of where you are. So if you can have everything displayed this is at cool. the same time, it like gives you, um, it's easier. It saves you some cognitive overhead, so. On the right-hand pane, I'm going to choose Socket IO Server, and I'm going to open up the server source code. Okay. okay. So these are the lines that uh, open that start a chat server, and then on a connection, it'll print a user is connected, and then it'll subscribe to a topic. You can specify the topic to be anything you want. We chose chat message, but it can be any string. You could have called this, you know, like chess move, for example, and uh, made that a special topic. And then anytime it'll, it subscribes to this topic called chess move. And, you know, just like a newsletter, you subscribe to a topic. And then anytime someone sends a message called emitting to this topic, you'll get a message and then we'll print it out here. So far, we're just echoing it. But in the future, we're going to, you know, re emit it out to all the other connected clients. And then this listens on port 3000. Okay. Awesome. And let me make sure I didn't leave the server running somewhere else. OK. So I'm going to start the server. Oh, I am running it somewhere else. You're running. Let me stop it. What else is listening on 3000? So. Now, point 3000, that's on everybody's computer? This is on the shared server, so this is on demo.r. Dot server.
So that's different than host local server 3000, right? Well, local host always, that's a good question, always refers to the current computer you're on. So now that you're logged into demo.arcology.builders, if you say local host, it'll mean demo.arcology.builders. But if you say local host on your own laptop, it'll mean your laptop. So local host just means whatever computer that you're on. Oh, I see what I did. Okay. Okay, there we go. So, you know, users are connecting, and then I'm going to open up the website so we see the web page that we're serving to everyone. Let's see, I want to rotate the layout. Let me look up how to do that. Tmux rotate. Now, I see this in my command module. Does Roper see it the same thing in here? Yep, everyone is seeing the same thing. Yep. So I could type in the screen too? Yep. Yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm in a, a Vim pane, which is a handline editor. And it takes some getting used to. So your arrow keys will definitely work. Well, I'll let you try it. Um, yeah, so you're, you're in the top pane right now. There are three panes. The top one contains index.html. Try using your arrow keys to move around. Yeah, there you go. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, both of you can try it. OK. That's cool. And, and, and weird at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, this is, uh, the, this is the most efficient way of screen sharing because it's only sending the characters back. It doesn't have to send images or like video. And one thing we can do is if you guys use VS Code, which is you know my favorite programming editor, Right really? now, okay, yeah, it is it, cool, uh -huh. and it's beginner friendly. Do you know VS Code Roper? Have you used it before? I, I I've used it before. Okay, I mean it is the. I think I got it on my machine. I, I do have a VS Code on my machine. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty resource heavy, but it's also the most okay. beginner friendly, and it has like a standard plugin. So, out of the box, it's the lowest hassle, uh, you know, way to get a bunch of useful programming features. Like yeah, right out of the box. We may we may connect to it later, but now that we've had had it set up and you've generated keys, you know, on VS Code, you can actually connect to this server, demo.arcology.builders. You can connect to any server and be able to edit code remotely. So you don't, you know, James may know this, but before you had to edit edit it locally on your computer and then upload it with FTP or SCP mm -hmm. or SFTP. And if you use VS Code, you just edit it directly where it's supposed to go anyway, wow. and it saves a lot of time. You know, but you, also, if you make a mistake, then it shows up immediately on your live website. So that's yeah. when you might have version control or, or something else. But, but that's for uh, a future time. What I wanted to do tonight was to at least repeat back messages that, um, that get sent. So you know, right now, I'm going to go back to the chat server and I'm going to try typing 
anyone can do this too, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do it first. Uh, that didn't show up the way I wanted it. Oh, right. So I changed the topic to chess move, and this is just as a demonstration in case James, you want to use a similar technique, but you can call the topic anything as long as it's so. Down here on the client, it says chess, if we uh, if the server listens on a topic called chess move, then we have to send in the client something on the topic chess move. And the way you send is you have an open socket here, socket with a method called emit, which is just a funny, fancy way of saying send. So we send something on the topic chess move. Send is this input value. And then in the server here, after a user connects and we say user is connected, we subscribe to a topic and then we get a, anytime we get a message, we can do something with the message here. So I'm gonna refresh and I think I'm still, am I still sharing my screen? Yes, I am. Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going to the website demo.arcologies builders port 3000 you guys can go in your own browser and type in your own messages and what we should see in the server is yeah so the server dumps out this is the message from paul so this is on the topic chess move but we can use any topic and then now we can continue in the uh the demo so what does the demo do it adds a list item to the display with the new message. So li is an HTML element, and then it appends a child, so it creates a new like DOM element, a new rectangle in the web page, and then it scrolls to that element. So that's that's pretty sophisticated. Um, so I'll copy this here. And I'll paste it here. So socket is the open client socket on the client side. Oof, I'm getting tongue tied. And then we subscribe to it. So when we receive something on the topic chess move, we take some actions. And the actions are to create a new element. That it's text content to the message we received. Add the list item, the new list item to messages. So messages is going to be the list the list of items in the demo. So I got to find its ID. It's just called messages. Most modern browsers support ES6 now, so I'm just going to use const. OK, it appends the child. It scrolls the window. OK, so it always scrolls the window back to here, position 0. Oh, cool. And then what we also want to do is when the server receives a message on chess move, instead of just repeating it, we want to send it back. So. See, it's called chat message and then oh interesting okay so socket is when a client is connected we call that socket but then we use io which is the original io object 
to emit it back. And then I think there's a deduplication, I think somewhere. Well, no, I think the, yeah, every web browser will receive back the message that. Yeah, I know there's a lot going on here. We'll pause in a minute and uh, we'll talk about everything that's going on. But so we're going to emit on here, chess move, and then we're going to repeat back message, MSG, and we'll try that. I'm just making up nonsense. Chess moves. And we received the message, but it didn't re it. Did it restart back. the server? Um, yeah, that's a good point. Maybe I do. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Especially the re emitting part. I think it'll, good call. It'll reload the client when I refresh the browser, but it won't rerun the server. Okay, there we go. Um, so it even has this nice alternating checkerboard. Yeah, I mean, are you, are you seeing anything in your browser? Yeah, so if you go back to your browser and refresh the website, you, uh, you can type things in the message and then you should see them repeated up above. And more than that, you know, when Roper and I or anyone else type messages, you know, I can say hello to James. That should show up on your browser too, if you're connected. If you're not connected, it will it'll lose the message. Oh, and I see you said hello to James, right? Yeah, yeah. Feel free to type something back too. And I said I said hello, Paul. Oh, okay. Yeah, that was from you. That's. I think so. There there are lots of cool features you could add. For example, log in. You could enter in your name, and then in front of every message you send, maybe it'll repeat your name, so we can tell who's saying what. Just like, you know, we're basically reinventing chat history from uh, AOL Instant Messenger, Messenger, <laughs> circa 1997. Oh, so poor. So now this is on the server, right? The server is serving as an intermediary, so it's it's passing along messages, but everything that you see in your browser is running in your browser. Your browser is. Okay, hold on. But, but right now, is this running all the time? Like tomorrow, if I wake up tomorrow and I type in demo.arcology.3000 and then I type something, anybody else who's logged on to demo Arcology Builder will see the message? Yeah, exactly. And that's, the, that's why I said before the public server is usually one that's on all the time so that you know one of us can go to sleep, I can close my laptop, you can close your laptop, and then other people can still play chess games or, or chat with each other. So that's what you want from a server is publicly accessible and then uh, always on. Now suppose I type a message, right? You're not on. I type the message, you're not on. Yeah. Now an hour later, somebody comes and they opens it up. Would they see the message? No. They, this only they have to be on at the same time that's right if you that's a good question so and you know you, you may be asking you know uh world of warcraft servers definitely don't act that way if, if something happens in a game and someone's offline when they log in again they'll see the results of what happened like their character got killed or they got a magical steed or, or whatever so how so can that, we, how can we implement I, resistance go ahead so when I build a game, right, I need to put it on the server like you did, this HTML, right? Yeah, and you can use this server to start with too, but you somewhat you need a server like this. There, there are other ways to do it. Like we can use an existing chat. No, just service, one. But this right. is uh, this is the main yeah. way to do it. Let's just work on this, right? So this server is the server that you already set up. Mm -hmm. If I wanted a, to put a game on it, right? Yeah. Would I change this code, or do I have to make a new server on this server? You can change this code. The, you know, the the port number is the the limited resource. So we have to, you know, all of us agree, like port. 
the chess server or the chat server or something. So there are lots of port numbers. You know, they, you can have, you know, I think up to like 65,000 port numbers uh, or more, but definitely that many. And so there's plenty of room to run 65,000 or 60,000 different games on the same server if you wanted to. Each one just gets a different port okay. number. So I, could, I could put a, another thing on I could leave this because this is there and this is a chat application. Yeah. And then I could make a game and I would make it and just use another port number. Yeah, exactly. Uh, okay, would I have to do something on the server side also? You would have to tell me first and I would open up the number because not all port numbers are open by default for security reasons but yeah as long as you let me know in advance i can change you know so you can open up the ports because you're the one that's running the server exactly yeah if you uh, but you can give other people access like i can add your aws account once you do the, what, okay once you do the port i then anyone who I tell go to, okay, no, no, this, anyone I tell go to demo, acryology builder, and that port, they would be logged on to this server. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, now, but also you said I could get my own server. Is that correct? Yeah, well, server here could mean different things. There's server hardware, and you can do that by creating your own AWS account and then resetting up um, everything. Or you could, it could be another software server. So it could be another server running on this same machine, but on a different port. So I could make an account on this server, right? Just like you did and, and write my code on that account. Yeah, well, you can access it now. Like this, the reason why we spent so much time accessing with Putty because now you have you have access. You we are sharing the same user account. It's called EC2 user, and it has super user privileges. So it can do anything uh, that anyone can do on the server. You can create files. You can delete files. You can download your code. You can yeah. You can do everything that if you know how to do it on the command line. So that's the that's the caveat. It would be it would require learning more Unix command line. But I think it's a useful skill and one that anyone who wants to make a web app. Um, yeah, should should learn eventually. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so again, you you spent a lot of time with me, right? We set it up, and I see it works, but I, it's a, it's a big ass, but I'm gonna ask it. But no. what I want to learn how to do is to put the HTML code on, how to put the server code on, right? Yeah, how to make it connect. So I understand how to do that. So we did a simple one, right? So I would want to do another simple one, but I would want to enter the code into the server, do the connection and whatever, right? So I know how to do it. And then the next thing after that, then I can start like building something. Because I told you eventually that I'd like to build something, you know, a game or something with the interaction and all that. So I know you have to write the HTML code to do that, but I can learn what code, like for instance, um, my, my puzzle game, right? My puzzle game that, that you see on my website, right? Mm -hmm. There should be a way to do that, and I would see it in the browser. But another person would be able to do something because they would see the same thing that I see. For instance, maybe we run the puzzle, right? And I do the first puzzle, and then the other person does the second puzzle. Do you follow me? Yeah, so I think what you're saying is you want to be able to work puzzles and share progress with someone else. Like, um, Not just part, I'm just using that as an example. Like any code that I write, right? Maybe, like, for instance, say I, 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 I make a card game. I make a card game. Uh, we both can see the same cards, right? And then, uh, okay, let's say Texas Hold'em, right? I make okay. a card game where the browser puts up two cards for me, two cards for the other person, right? 
then there'd be a button that clicks on it that would shuffle the cards and deal out three cards, right? And then the other user would have an option to do something, but they can have an option to do something. They can put something in the browser that makes something happen in the script. Yeah, I mean, that's correct. Normally on card games, everyone has their own hand that other players can't see. Yeah. Um, you, you can do it. You can design it any way you want. It could be a collaborative card game where... Yeah, but that's basically what I, I, I'm saying. That's eventually where I want to get. So you've done a lot of stuff for me. You, you've shown me I got a key on my computer. I can attach to this server, which is your server, right? Well, it's a server for anyone in this meetup. Um, so it's, it's public as far as we're concerned. Right, it's a public yeah. server, right? Yeah. But again, I could make another server that I would say is a public server, but it would be different from the server that you have. Is that correct? Yeah, you know, Amazon is not going to run out of servers. You know, they have thousands and thousands, like uh, in the movie The Matrix, just rows and rows of servers. <laughs> right. Uh, <in> the data <laughs> center. Yeah. Uh, you can rent any number of them, yeah. So are you willing to meet with me again to help me try to do some of this stuff? Yeah, I mean, I have time now. So and believe it or not, I mean, you, you think that I've done a lot. The most work of a game is to do the creative work, which is to decide, you know, what to display on the screen, what color to make it, how the players interact. So, you know, believe it or not, you're, you're still doing most of the work. It's um, when you show up to a help session, you ask for help. It's easy for someone to answer your question, but it's not, you know, only you know what you want your game to do. And that's, that's the creative work. And it's also the, the hard part. Yeah, well, I, I'm, that's, that's work I'm going to do, right? I have some ideas. I haven't done the work on it because the first thing is to, is to learn how to connect to the server because you see, you see the game that I made, right? Yeah, I, that's okay. game, right? So you, I, I have one of the games up. Like I got a I got a match game. It's on uh it's called match game dot ninety eight cent lesson dot com. It's another thing where it's like a grid of uh, as a matter of fact, you could type it in your browser and you would see it. Yeah, I meant mate, but I'll change it to match well, game. Match game dot ninety eight cent dot lesson dot com. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing, but I, I definitely click on things. So, yeah, I, I think what you were asking before is, you know, how do you save state so that, you know, when someone clicks on something, someone else can come along later and then see what they missed. They can load the website and see the state. So, to no, do that, no, would no. Need... I would develop a. This is just an example of what I know I can do graphically, right? Yeah, I haven't designed the game yet. I would design a game, but basically it would be two people playing the same game. It might be another thing, like, you know, Asteroids? Yeah. I, re I, I rewrote Asteroids, and mine is much better than the one that they have on the terminal. That's because what I like to hear. Mine is in color. It has, like, ten different ships. It shoots lasers, it breaks up the rocks, the rocks are in color, and there's a scoreboard where you can save it in your name and whatever. I wrote it in Turbo Pascal. Oh, man. I haven't written that since I was in high school. So is it online? Can I, can I play asteroids.98centlesson.com? You, you would have to put, no. This oh, one is it's written in Turbo Pascal. You would have, it's for your local machine. You would have to... That sounds like excuses, James. I bet there's terms. Ah, 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 ah. no, I, I, I will send you the code. It's like it's like <laughs> it must be like five thousand lines of code. Boom! Look at this web-based Turbo Pascal. You have no more excuses. Really? Uh, okay. Really? <laughs> it's what it says. It says web-based Pascal compiler. Okay, so I have to. What I have to do is go get my disks. I have in my. In my storage, I have maybe two or three hundred disks of Turbo Pascal stuff that I wrote. 
and like the versions when I was writing when I was writing the program I was learning how to program and first I wrote something I had to write you know how do you make a rock go across the screen right you know you have to write the code that puts the the pixels you know the little dots in the proper position to make a rock right then you have to write an equation to make it you know all of the pixels plus one move over, right? Mm -hmm. And then you have a bunch of them, so you have to call a bunch of procedures. You know, it was a procedure-driven application that I would have to look at again to see how did I do this? But there was lots of things, like if, for instance, the ship. So, you know, in the regular asteroid, they have that little triangle, that's the ship. Mine actually looks like a spaceship, right? So it's a lot of um, it's a lot of pixels you have to display to make the ship. Then you have to write an equation to make the ship move across. And then you know you have to make equation stuff that says if this hits the line of a rock, it explodes or whatever. Or when you shoot the ray, when the ray shoots out, when it hits a rock. You have to tell it there was a collision so that the rock breaks. Then you have to call another function to say, now make that rock that broke into two rocks. And you want to make them go in different directions. You got to write that. And then one of the hardest things that I found was when I want to turn the ship, right? Because it's a lot of different pixels. How do I turn the ship? I don't want to rewrite something for every position of the ship. There's a mathematical, I forget what, it starts with a T. It's, it's like math, and it's, you have it in, it's like you have a function that's going across, and then there's something that you do that says, turn all of the pixels around into the other direction. Yeah, but well, you're I mean, you send you the code. If you're interested, I will send you the code. I wrote this code when I was learning how to program. I was a clerk, and they were giving me work. I didn't want to do the work. I said, I'm not doing this work. And they kept giving me work to do. I said, I'm not doing it. But um, the attorney general of HPD said, uh, Mr. Hunter's going to work for you, and it's basically you got to let him do what he wants to do. Really, it was really like that. And so I told him, give me a computer. And I put the computer on, and I bought Turbo Pascal. And for a month, I sat and I wrote that program. Learning how to program, you know, how do you put the pixels on? How do you move it across? But it's a lot of code. I think it's a very nice program because the Asteroids was on, you know, in arcade. And frankly, mine is much, much better. It's much, much better than that, you know. So if there's that website that we can load it up, I just have to find one of the finished versions of my code. And maybe we can load it up and you can see. It, it's nice. It's a, it's a pretty program. But I haven't run it yet because, you know, when computers turn, now Windows won't load it, you know. Uh, I even bought a computer so that I could put DOS back on it because it runs in DOS. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, Bill Gates is trying to keep you down for sure. He's he's oppressing indie game developers. He wants you to upgrade to the latest version of DOS. He wants you to shell out, you know, 50 bucks in 1987 for DOS 7. So, But don't listen to him. You just, you know, <laughs> we'll compile your code for the for the modern web and then it's open standard so it'll be runnable forever cool again you know just something else if you ever want to see it you ever want to look at it that's fine with me you know i have another group looking at my chess program yeah well now you have a server to share it on i mean as i mentioned code code sandbox lets you uh, i think this would work this whole demo would work on Code Sandbox 2, like it has a socket IO server and then everyone who visits, um, you know, a certain URL, like a certain site would connect to the same server. The so you, is whether it would be well, running, like Code Sandbox is 
I think it may go to sleep if not if people don't connect to it in a while. Um, okay, so basically, hold on. Could I share my screen? Yeah. Okay, so let me. I'll stop. Let me share. Let's see. Go back here. I am sharing my screen. Yeah. But that's not my screen. This is my... the scary part. Well, we've all been sharing this whole time. Yeah. Which one? Okay, let me move this so I can see. Well, no. Move this. I'm opening a Visual Studio. If you can see my thing, you see how much stuff I got on my computer. Yeah, it's an average amount of stuff for a uh, you know computer brain. So I thought it was a lot. <laughs> okay, open a folder. You should see my open tabs. Yeah. So I'm open a folder. Let's see. I gotta go to. Um, I gotta go to C drive. The PC open this one. Then I gotta go to games. Uh, then JavaScript. No, I put it in examples. That's another thing. Like knowing where you put everything sometimes is uh, JavaScript, examples. And then let's see, example socket. I, I think I saw it X socket IO. Exactly. Here it is. This one. Select this folder. And so I basically have like the same kind of code that we put on the server, right? So if I wrote my code here, right? Yeah. I could just put it on the server, right? Well, let me show you. Now that we're here in VS Code, there's a plugin called Remote Explorer on VS Code. So if on the if you click on the dot 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 underneath that, yeah, click on that and choose extensions. Or you already have it actually, Remote Explorer. So sorry, click on the dot 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 again. I have it. Choose Remote Explorer. Okay. What requires you to log into GitHub? How does it even make any sense? This is not. Um, can you click on the dot 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 next to Remote Explorer? Maybe we can choose uh, containers or SSH. I have, a, I have GitHub. I, I think I have a GitHub account. Yeah, we don't need to this time, but up where it says Remote Explorer above GitHub code spaces. So at the very, the top left. Here. Yeah, there's, there's a dot, dot, dot menu. Try choosing that. No, that's not it. Um, well, I don't, yeah, I don't like logging in because all I want to do is log into an SSH. I think it's actually called something else. I think it's called remote SSH. So um, yeah, let's go back to the extensions, ex the extensions uh, manager. Yeah, that one and choose extensions. And then when you search, try, try typing remote space SSH. Come on, okay. Yeah, you might have to expand the yes. that left hand. Okay, what is it? Remote space what? SSH. SSH. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Yeah, there you go. The top hit, so choose install. Perfect. And um, so now, uh, try closing, try opening a new VS Code window. Okay. Let's just go back to... Uh, yeah, you can do file, new window. Open folder. Or Same. new window. New window is what you wanted, actually. Well, it doesn't. Either way works, right? Well, we want to connect to the remote server first, but okay, okay, hold right. on. We do, we need, we do need both eventually. Um, okay. As long as you have one open to your local okay, file, new, uh, window. new window. Yeah. No, this is a new. This is a new. Uh, what you call? That's not what we want. We want. We want to just want a new file in a folder, right? We want a new connection. And so when you open a window, you can choose to connect to a remote computer via SSH. Okay, so, okay, let me do that then. File, open new window. 
And so now I got a new window. Now what do you want me to do? Okay. Uh, normally there would be a button called like Remote Explorer that would let you connect. Uh, maybe we have to close VS Code and load it again. I thought it would like hot reload, but maybe not. But isn't the extension your or the extension is already open in Studio, right? Well, I I agree with you, but sometimes you need to reload the the software for it to detect. So let's see. There's course control. There's live share sessions. You have a lot of plugins installed, so you might need to scroll up and down in the pan pane to find the one called remote. In the extension thing? In this left-hand window where it says Explorer, and you see the different sections like live share and source control, yeah. you can scroll up and down. Yeah, exactly like that. So Live share extensions. So keep scrolling. Looks like you're at the bottom. So try scrolling all the way to the top. The top Just this is out of curiosity, if you click the three dots at the bottom or in the middle of the left hand column, the yep. on the left hand side. I'm, on I'm the sorry, far left. Right, yeah. I am right. Right left? Yeah, left. Oh. oh. Right. That's right. That's the right hand side. So the other the complete other side of the screen, that gray bar. Come keep going to the left. Okay. Now go down and click those three dots there. Yeah. Yeah. Um, click on. Is it remote? It's not that remote explorer, is it? I, it should be. So try remote explorer, but now it has SSH. So I think that's the. Is that it? Um, if you see where it says GitHub code spaces at the top. Yeah. In the drop down. The, okay. The drop down. Go to the right about a third of the screen. And I go up. Yeah, yeah does that, that have SSH that. as an option under it? Yeah, maybe remote oh, there. I think remote is it, yeah. Good call. Yeah, there you go. There we, there we go. So now when you hover over SSH, you see a plus sign on the right-hand side. Choose plus, so you're going to add a new connection. Go ahead and click it. Yeah, and then uh, <laughs> here is how we're going to somehow connect to our with our... Uh, Key. Okay, no, we can do this. So type SSH. There we go. SSH. Yep. Space. Minus I. So we're going to specify a key file. I. Yeah. Space. Space. And type tilde, which is the shift of the backtick to the left of the one key. Yeah forward slash which is underneath the question mark yeah and then uh try pressing tab twice to see if it it will help us by auto completing maybe it won't um oh wait no it's going to be the wrong key it's going to be the wrong key format um it's okay we'll keep going um type uppercase d documents d Uppercase D, although I think on Windows the case yeah. probably doesn't matter, but documents. D O C U M E N T S. But lowercase, um, the uppercase, other D, uppercase D, and then lowercase everything after it. Yeah, great. And then forward slash keys, K E Y S. Slash, yeah. And then uh, my key name. Uh, we're gonna call it uh, ID. ID underscore, which is the shift under the minus sign. Under oops. That's okay. That was a uh, control minus, but we just want shift minus. Yeah. E C. D S A. D S A. Dot pub. B U B. Yeah. Space. Space. And then the host name demo dot arcology dot oh, building. Ar 
Uh, G builders. Dot builders. Dot build. Two sure. quick. Uh, just a quick question for slow learner. Why? Why read? You've already got the pub key saved in ID dot pub. Why are you? Are you going to generate a new key? Uh, I'm, we're going to munch the existing key to be in Unix format because currently it's in Putty Gen. Oh, that the Putty format. format is different. Okay, I didn't know that. Um, one other thing is you might put the username in front of the host name. Oh, you're right. That's a great call. Um, so James, before demo, like right before the D, go ahead and type EC2 minus user. EC2 minus user. U S E R. Minus. At minus. User. Yep. At. Yep. At. Yeah. Great. Just like last time. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, if I could just interrupt a minute, right? Yeah, sure. So another reason for using Zoom, right, is then I could, what do you call it? You could save it. You could save the Zoom session. You can record it. You're right. Yeah, you could record it. So all of the things that you said and showed me and whatever, yeah, right, I could redo it and go over it again and over it again and over it again right yeah if yeah, you want a recording right. of this call i have a recording of this call it's obs is the program that at least on the most systems you would use open broadcaster studio oh yeah i thought about um because i can record it too we don't have to use zoom but zoom does a, have a nice cloud recording feature like uh yeah i use it for teaching Sometimes, and you're right, although the fact someone playing my voice over and over again makes me cringe uh, for, for other reasons. But, okay, but, but, but you're right, this would be a useful tutorial. If we, we could make like a polished how to. Yeah, it would be nice. It, and, and not just this, like, again, my reason for coming to the Discord channel in the first place was to learn, right? To learn. So all the time that you spent, you've been with me now for three hours. Uh, three hours, right? Hours, yeah. Okay, so we sit and, like you said, we clean it up. Uh, you know, say things a little slower, maybe, or explain things a little bit better. And now you have a, you know, something like they put on YouTube, but you have it for yourself. And then there's, you can decide how you want to use it. Like, do you want to just be helpful and nice like you were with me? Or maybe one day you want to have a class. Are you saying you, you're getting a meetup group, right? Well, we, we you, have a meetup group. Um, you have a meetup group. Yeah. Now, I'm sure a lot of these guys already know this because the other gentleman, and I don't know your name, but thank you, sir. The other gentleman... Just blue, so getting you. Us, right? He knows this stuff. Yep. But I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't. You know, there's a, I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't. So if they ask you this question, and you're going to be doing multiple different things, right? One of the first things you could do is say, okay, watch this video. You're not going to understand everything, but watch it. Get familiar with it. Get familiar with some of the terms. And now I'm going to go over it with you. Just a yeah. suggestion. I mean, some people would be into it. And if you look on YouTube, Google, like uh, Putty Gen SSH like, Windows uh, tutorial, someone has probably done it and done like a great um, job. Well, I've looked and I, I can't find it. Okay. Well, and maybe you don't even know, you didn't know what to Let's search for. So I agree. Having an organized like, library of tutorials, but you know, that is the problem. If you're a beginner, you don't know what to search for. And then the others is the other concern is like, you know, like say you're at Disney World and you, you know, you see Goofy and you walk over to Goofy and say, hey, how Space Mountain or whatever a ride is called. And then, you know, Goofy can just give you a long series of <laughs> Goofy can say, watch this YouTube video. And uh, here's a long list of instructions. And then uh, let me know if you have trouble or Goofy 
just like walk you over to the ride and you know which one of those is a much better experience for someone who's lost at disney world and so in, in terms of teaching you know on the one hand it is nice to have a well-organized library of tutorials but then on the other hand which i'm not worried about being replaced by chat gpt and other ais yet is that um <laughs> they they will not necessarily make you feel uh exactly okay so, <laughs> they're, they're not going to be present with you so okay so another one of my websites is a wordpress website that i have right okay and it's called i think what is it what did i call it i anyhow it it's another website i have another website and this website is a wordpress website and in the website when you open it up it basically says i'm teaching html css and javascript and then there's menu items. And under it, one would say div, and one would say whatever. And in those, each one of those, what I want to do is put a video and a lesson and a link. Yeah. And so you put it now. So the, the difference would be then, for me, as opposed to the YouTube website is, so now you come to me, you click on my videos, right? And I call it 98centlesson.com. I was thinking, am I going to charge for this? You know, maybe they would buy several lessons at the same time. But it also comes with me. So you look at the video. You don't understand it. But I would say on my phone, I'm going to sit by my phone for two hours. For those people who don't understand, want to call me. And just like you're going over it with me, I would go over it with them. But my only premise would be you had to look at the video first. So you have some idea of what we're talking about. That was one of my possible business plans. Yeah. I mean, you could do it. Any interaction you want to design, you can make And uh, just book or... But it's just a suggestion. We spent a lot of time on this. It would have been nice to have it documented. Though the other gentleman said he did it already. So yeah, now this is a this is a common. Uh, you know, when you work with servers a lot, eventually, you know, you do this for every server that you want to log into. Yeah. Yeah, but you know, if you wanted to, you could design a website. You can detect whether the user has like watched video all the way through and then it takes them to like uh, a landing page where it, then they're able to contact you and then you know if they contact you from that page they've watched the whole video so yeah i mean yeah. sounds like you have a teaching instinct so whatever process you think whatever journey you think is useful for learners you know you can design your website that way and uh and so yeah, this the interaction this that we have. When I started my, the first four of us, I had a group of uh, two chess masters. And the top black chess female in the United States, and we were all meeting. And we were just looking at tech stuff, you know, different tech stuff. Uh, Google Sheets, um, WordPress. Um, Adobe products, uh, videos, uh, Stream, Steam. No, it's called Steam. Steam, where you have different chat channels. We're looking at all of this stuff, right? Not showing, thinking, you know, are we going to go into business or whatever, but let's learn and possibly later on, maybe we'll have some kind of business. So my friend, who's the National Chess Master, he now has a website called chessforchildren.com and he's teaching in a school in Brooklyn. He has a school in Brooklyn where he's teaching 100 kids. That's his business now. You know, and he gets like $100 an hour per kid. Eventually, maybe I'll do something like that. Maybe I won't. But talking to people like you, who have the different ideas, and I see it on your website, your 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 business website with the home. Like you have a you have a vision of having a house where people can come and meet, and you know you have a business model. 
But that's what you do. You talk about it and possible business models. Some people just want to learn. Some people want to have a business model. But before you have a business model, you got to have something that you find is worthwhile, right? I think, my particular feeling is, I believe that there are, are uh, chess camps who are getting $20,000 for six months to train people. You know more than they do. I'm telling you, you know more than they do. Well, you not about chess, but you know, I- No, 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 I didn't mean I'm, chess. I'm at the, yeah, I'm at the level of- Programming sites, programming sites. Like, uh, what is it, Codesmith? They want you to sign up. They get $20,000 for six months. I'm yeah. at the right level of teaching for me, but for sure, like anything that you learn from these no, sessions, no, you're you ahead of them. Use uh, as you want, you're but ahead yeah. of them. I've sat in some of their tutorials, and you know more than they do. You just don't know that you know more than they do. Oh no, I pro I probably do about programming. I just um, that's a whole other level of commitment. Is like wanting to run a six month camp for you know teenagers. That no, like a great mission. That's more than, than I'm willing to do. So that's for okay. sure. <laughs> I'm just throwing it out there, but it wouldn't have to be a six month camp. It could be in a one hour tutorial. I mean, that could be your business model. It could oh, be a so one hour tutorial. tutorial. Yeah, I appreciate, appreciate the thought. I have the, you know, I'm working on other business models, which is. Okay. Okay. So I got away from it. Just throwing it out there. The that I'm looking at right now. But okay. I so we got this. So what are we going to do now? Uh, you're going to press enter. <laughs> press enter. That would work. Yeah. I mean, it's not going to work the first time, but uh, let's see. We want to save this. So choose the top one, the user's jhunt ssh config. Go ahead and click it. It's already selected. Oh, to hit enter? Uh, I think you can just click on the blue. Yeah, click on that one. Okay. And then, okay, it's added. Great. And then now you can click connect and it's going to fail the first time, but we just want to test it. And then, uh, I don't know, I guess it's thinking about it. It's a, so, there's a more thing. Should I click that? Mm, no, I think looking for other signs of life, which maybe are not forthcoming, but we need to create a file which doesn't exist yet. So, uh, go ahead and uh, if you have Notepad or yeah, I think you have Notepad open. That's perfect. How about this file right here? Um, well, I think Notepad has the advantage of that it's open to the public key file, and, and then if you click Save As, it's already going oh. to go to the right path, which is in Documents. Right here, open, open. Yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, perfect. So I'm gonna send you a a key format to put. What? Who typed this stuff? Oh, data hog. Oh man, I don't recognize who typed this, but anyway, maybe I've already been compromised. It's okay. It's a shared server. Uh, it's bound to happen. Well, that's actually makes me feel good. Okay, someone was trying to run something called on this shared server. Um, that's interesting. Okay, the one I'm going to copy for you. So how do we disconnect from this server? Yeah, that's a good question. You can just click the close, the X button on PuTTY on the right-hand oh, side. Okay. The or, if you wanna, uh, or you can press Control-B and then D. As that will detach from the Tmux. And then you press Control-D again, which, is, which will log out. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, the easiest way is just to click the X, the close button on the right hand of the upper right hand. Oh, and automatically the close the session. Okay. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, so, James, I pasted into chat uh, a public key. 
and you can just select all of it and paste it into Notepad. It's in Discord. Yeah. Yeah. On the chat. So yeah, I think I need that. I think I need that plugin for my VS um, code. I just downloaded it again. Oh yeah, you can do it right now with us now. It's, this will be super useful because then afterwards, you know, y'all can log into the remote server super easily, much easier than Putty, and then you can edit files there. And oh, it's a long string. Yeah. Should I break it up or leave it like it is? Uh, leave it like it is, but you're going to delete the for the lines that were there before, and you're only going to have this new line. So you delete the thing above it? Yeah, just backspace, like select over it and press backspace. Delete? Okay. Yeah, press backspace a couple more times to move that single line all the way to the top. Okay. And then we're going to save as, so you're going to go to file. Save as, and we're going to give it a new name. Except, yeah. Okay. Um, so I'll let y'all finish this. Oh, yeah. We're, we're almost done. So then change the name to ID underscore. ID underscore. Underscore. ECDSA. EC what? DSA. DSA. Dot. Dot. Pub. And then for the save as type, go ahead and choose that drop down. Not save, don't, don't save yet, but under the save as type. Yeah, click on that drop down. And then choose all files. We just don't want it to add at .txt. Perfect. And then click save. Okay, my point was going to be this is the public key. Everyone knows the public key. So in order to log in, you have to specify the private key. Oh. You're right. Oh, okay. Well, we need an SSH version of the... Yeah, you're totally right, Dispulik. Um, <laughs> my bad. So, James, you're going to click File, Open. File, Open. Yeah. And then...